Some of the exercises on this tier list, I think most of you haven't even heard of. Before we jump in, this video isn't just about the biceps. It's about the three Bs, the three muscles that flex our elbows, the biceps brachii, the brachialis, and the brachioradialis. First, we have the barbell curl. The barbell curl is a time-tested classic, but perhaps not the best bicep exercise. First, the positives. It can easily be overloaded, can be used in a variety of repetition ranges, and is widely available. However, it suffers from a few meaningful limitations. First, it places next to no tension on the biceps in the stretch position. Instead, the greatest resistance occurs when the elbow reaches 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Placing more tension in the stretch, according to some emerging research, would make for a better bicep exercise. To illustrate this idea, Zabalita Corda and colleagues compared the incline curl, where peak resistance is applied on the biceps at the top of the rep, to the preacher curl, where peak resistance is applied to the biceps in the stretch position. The preacher curl resulted in more growth of the elbow flexors overall at all three sites, suggesting we want more resistance in the stretch. Second, the barbell curl doesn't provide a great stretch to the biceps, since your arm is right by your side. If we were to bring our arm behind our torso and extend our shoulder instead, we would get a greater stretch. Many studies have found greater hypertrophy when training through a more stretched range of motion, making this a drawback to the barbell curl. Want proof? There are four studies looking at focusing on the stretch in the biceps. Generally, these studies find similar or greater growth when focusing on doing stretch training. The most extreme findings are by Sato and colleagues, who found somewhere between a bit more growth to six times more growth, depending on the area measured when doing stretched partials compared to shortened partials. While the difference probably isn't quite this large, it is worth making sure we stretch the biceps in the exercise we do, which makes the barbell curl suboptimal. Third, a barbell curl involves a decent amount of stabilization by the core and other muscles, and is relatively easy to cheat. Overall, the barbell curl is an okay exercise, earning it a place in B tier, and we'll use it as a benchmark for other exercises. Its close cousin, the easy bar curl, is very similar. The only difference between the easy bar curl and barbell curl is that an easy bar allows for slightly more variation in grip positioning, aka less supination. While this slightly stretches the biceps, it's a tiny difference, making barbell curls and easy bar curls very similar. Importantly, one of the claims made by Mike Menser was that easy bar curls are worse for bicep growth. There is no strong scientific basis for this, so I'll place easy bar curls in B tier right above barbell curls. What if you use dumbbells instead? The dumbbell curl is a slightly better option for a couple of reasons. For one, it allows a bit more flexibility with wrist positioning, making it usable for a wider variety of trainees. Indeed, some trainees get joint pain when forced into strong supination. Additionally, the dumbbell curl requires minimal setup. You just grab the dumbbells and get going. And it's loaded unilaterally, allowing you to minimize imbalances. So dumbbell curls get put into A tier. Let's stick to the theme of dumbbells. There are three other dumbbell curls that deserve ranking. The incline curl, the preacher curl, and the recently named lying dumbbell curl. Let's touch on the incline curl and preacher curl first. The incline curl was shown to cause less muscle growth than the preacher curl by Zabalita Kora and colleagues. A direct study comparing two exercises is the strongest evidence we can rely on, even more so than scientifically derived general principles. Therefore, we need to rank the incline curl lower than the preacher curl. However, the incline curl is likely still slightly better than a standing dumbbell curl, since it's the same movement, just more stretched. Sitting down also reduces involvement of the core musculature and instability. Therefore, the incline curl goes into high A tail. The preacher dumbbell curl, therefore, has to go into high S tail. It's been shown to cause robust growth in several studies, likely on account of how much resistance there is in the stretch position, when the forearm is parallel to the ground. Likewise, the barbell or easy bar preacher curl will be placed high in this tier list. But since they can often restrict the stretch by hitting the safeties, because they're less time efficient, and because they're less flexible in terms of wrist positioning, we'll relegate them to A tier. Next, let's talk about the lying dumbbell curl, pioneered by Dr. Mike Isbertel. It has the same benefit, but even more of it, as a preacher curl, being hardest at the bottom of the lift. In addition, it stretches the biceps more than a preacher curl by having the arm in a neutral position instead. This sounds great, but there is one big catch. The front delts are heavily involved. You're performing an isometric contraction to keep your arms from falling down like wet noodles. In fact, the isometric contraction is so challenging 
that it could feasibly make the biceps no longer the limiting factor. Therefore, we'll put this exercise in high A tier. Let's move on to the machine section of the gym. First, the machine preacher curl. While this is a very time efficient exercise, it also usually discards its biggest advantage, the resistance profile. Whereas a free weight preacher curl is hardest in the stretch, a machine preacher curl is frequently hardest in the peak contraction. This is a big deal, as the resistance profile in the stretch is one of, if not the main thing, to look for in a good exercise. On top of that, like other preacher curls, it shortens the biceps at the shoulder by having your arm elevated. Therefore, machine preacher curl goes into mid B tier. If you often wonder what the best exercise for building muscle is, MyoAdapt is a training app for you. MyoAdapt ranks all exercises for you based on effectiveness and gives you a truly individualized training program based on what equipment you have. Do you train in a home gym and you don't have access to a lot of equipment? MyoAdapt can cover you. Or do you train in a commercial gym where you have access to a bunch of equipment? MyoAdapt can also adapt to that circumstance. MyoAdapt is going to be the smartest training app on the market. And having with the competition, I can confidently say it is like nothing else out there. If you'd like to be notified when MyoAdapt launches and sign up for a lifetime discount, go to myoadapt.com and put in your email. Load up the cable stack. It's time to talk about cable exercises. There are four exercises to discuss here, from worst to best. First, the cable curl. The traditional cable curl is an okay exercise, but it suffers from many of the same limitations as the barbell curl. There is a bit more resistance in the stretch position, and it's slightly more time efficient, but all the other downsides of a standing curl still apply. High B tier. Next, a slightly better option, the Bayesian curl. Named by Menno Henselmans, this exercise places your arms behind you to stretch out the biceps a bit more. It also allows us to put the cables higher and place more tension or resistance in the stretch position. Therefore, it both provides more stretch and resistance in the stretch. Two important components of a good exercise, but it retains the standing component. It also loads the arms unilaterally, remedying imbalances. Into high A tier. If only we could find a way to remove the standing component and make an S tier exercise. Oh wait, we can. The bench cable curl, trademarked. All the benefits of a Bayesian curl minus the standing component. Straight into S tier. Finally, we have the oft forgotten crucifix curl. Besides being the most alpha looking bicep exercise, the peak squeeze is literally a front double bicep pose. It's a decent exercise. The short head of the biceps is responsible for transverse flexion, meaning bringing your arms out to your sides stretches it more. And yes, more stretch is probably good. However, this doesn't apply to any of the other elbow flexors, let alone the long head of the biceps. It can be a good variation to include every now and then for completeness sake. Hi A2. To round out our list, we have three controversial exercises. First, the reverse barbell curl. Let's compare it to the barbell curl. By adopting an overhand grip, we stretch the biceps a bit more. This is a good thing. However, we also involve our forearm extensors to keep our wrists straight. These muscles are relatively weak and can limit performance. Therefore, reverse curls may reduce how close we can take our elbow flexors to failure. In my view, this benefit and drawback roughly cancel each other out. So I'll put the reverse curl right below the barrel curl for overall elbow flexor growth. Next, the chin up or pull up or any pull down or pull up variation. Those can be a pretty good option for bicep growth. The downside, many other muscles are involved, there's a much larger stabilization required, and the movement is more fatiguing than a bicep curl will ever be. However, we actually have two studies looking at the effect of back training on bicep growth. A study on a dumbbell row found only around half the growth from underhand dumbbell rows compared to supinated dumbbell curls. So rows may not be the best bicep growers. However, the second study comparing the wide grip pronated pulldown to the barbell curl found similar bicep growth, though they only measured one area of the biceps. Nevertheless, based on this study, similar growth to a dumbbell curl means we can cautiously put pull-ups or vertical pulling into high B tail. Finally, we have the banded bicep curl. This has all the downsides of a barbell curl with the additional downside of placing even less resistance in the stretch. The one upside the banded curl has is that it allows you to get more bicep stretch by getting your arm behind you. Since resistance profile is a bit more important than just stretch, I'll put the banded curl into C tier. Now, if I had to tell you, what's the best bicep exercise? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's probably going to be the bench cable curl or the preacher curl. Because of how important the stretch is and you get more of a stretch in the bench cable curl by having your arm behind you, I'd put my money on the bench cable curl, but I could be wrong. 
we need a few studies comparing the two for me to tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt. In the meantime, we can use general scientific principles to guide exercise selection. Regardless, incorporate some preacher curls into your routine, incorporate some stretch cable curls, and you'll be doing some of the best bicep exercises. But I want to hear from you. Did I rank any exercises wrongly? Are there any exercises I forgot to rank? If you think so, let me know down below and I'll reply to some of the most upvoted comments. Dr. Milo Wolf, we out.